Hey everybody, Blendmaster here with another tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool abstract cube animation completely inside of Blender and the best part about this is that the animation is completely seamless so you can loop it for however long that you want. So let's jump into Blender and get started. First thing we want to do is delete this lamp here and we're going to switch over to the cycle settings and with our cube selected I'm going to tab into edit mode press W and click on subdivide we're going to increase the number of cuts to about 10 and now what we're going to do is come over to the modifiers tab here and add in this build modifier and basically what the build modifier does is if you play the animation here it's essentially building up our 3D object and the start frame is when our animation has no generated faces and by frame 100 uh, we should have all our faces generated and as you can see right now it's basically building this in a very linear fashion but we want it to be more randomized so I'm just going to check that here and you can see that's looking a lot better and then what you want to do is just select a place where you think that there's just enough geometry missing that it doesn't look too empty but also it's not too full so I think frame 45 is pretty good and then what I want to do is add in a solidify modifier and I'm going to increase this thickness to about 0.025 and you want to make sure that even thickness is selected and then you want to add in an edge split modifier as well and I think that's pretty good so now we'll create the material for this so I'm just going to check use nodes here let's name it metal and I'm going to add in a mix shader and let's just mix a simple diffuse and glossy shader together and with this diffuse I'm going to make it a pure black and the glossy I'm going to make it a pure white color and the roughness I'm going to set to about 0.1 and for this factor, I'm going to add in a Fresnel node and just leave it at 1.45. I think that's pretty good. If we go into render view, we can sort of see our material. But there's no lighting currently set up. So to do that, let's add in a plane. And from side view, orthographic mode, I'm going to press R and rotate it by 90 degrees. And then scale it up by 5. And just move it back on the Y axis to about here and we're going to give it a new material let's name it light and this I'm going to give it an emission shader make it pure white and set the strength to about 2.5 and then let's press or first let's go to the object tab here and under cycle settings you want to make sure that under ray visibility the camera buttons unchecked so that we actually don't see the light when we render out our final animation and then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it, right click to just apply it, then Alt G and Alt R to clear its location and rotation. From side view, I'll just rotate it by negative 45 degrees, move it up to about there. And then top view, I'll rotate by 45 degrees again and move it to like this corner. And here we want to give it a new material, and this I'm going to decrease the strength to about 1, and make it a light bluish color. If we go to our preview, we can sort of see what it looks like. I don't want it to be that strong, so I'm going to desaturate it a little bit more, I think. And then let's duplicate that one more time. Alt-G, Alt-R. This one I'm going to scale it down by about half. And let's rotate it by 45 degrees. Move it down here. And then top view, rotate it again by negative 45. Whoops and position it right there we'll give it a new material this one i'm going to set to a strength of about five and give it more of an orangish tint so if we go to rendered view we can sort of see the effect we're getting that cool blue and the light orange warm orange color i'm just going to check the background node and make it pure black so that way it's looking a lot better and i'm also going to make the background transparent because we want to add in a gradient background to this. So I think that looks pretty good. Now we need to create our inner glow material. So I'm just going to duplicate this cube here by pressing Shift D. 
and I'll hide the original cube so that way we're just working with this one and in the modifier tab we want to take this build modifier and put it below the solidify by pressing this down arrow and basically what that does is it first adds a thickness to our object so I'm going to increase this to about 0.05 and then it builds from that so that way there's actually space in between these two layers instead of a continuous face and an actual thickness. And what we want to do is to get this outer layer to be transparent and the inner layer to have a glow so that way it looks like there's an inner glowing box to our cube. So to do that we're going to create two materials in this material tab. Let's delete this first one and let's add a new one and name it transparent and just make it a transparent material let's see. and then as you can see that there's still some darkness here and you can actually see it even though it's transparent and that's because the color is not completely white so you just want to make sure that's there and then we'll make a new material for our glow let's just make this an emission color or emission shader and let's make it a light greenish color and increase the strength to about 20 so it's pretty strong and right now you're not seeing anything because the entire cube is assigned to this transparent shader but to get the inner part of the cube we just need to come to the solidify modifier here and where it says material index offset you just want to increase that to one so that the second layer has that material as you can see that this part is the one that has the glowing material. So now we can unhide our other cube there and I'm also going to make sure that we're using a filmic mode. That looks a lot better and right now this uh, glowing part of the cube is a little too much and it's also very full like there's not a lot of missing pieces so to fix that I'm going to increase this length to about 150 so that way at frame 45 the cube is not completely finished being built and then I'm also going to randomize the seed so we get a different view of the build I think that looks pretty cool but again this uh, glowing material is a little too close to our edge for my liking so I just want to scale that in a bit to about there I think is pretty good yeah I think that's pretty good so now the last thing we need to add is a wireframe so let's select our original cube here press shift D to duplicate I'm just going to delete the build and solidify modifiers and we're going to add a wireframe let's increase this thickness to about 0.03 and let's make sure that the metal material is selected and in rendered view, I'm just going to press S to scale it down to about there. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's good. And you can check to see if that's looking how you like it. Maybe you want to scale down the cube and the glowing part just a little bit more. So maybe about there. Yeah, I think that looks good. So now what we want to do is just select all the cube parts and press Shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to move it to a second layer just as a backup. And then with all of them selected again, I'll press Alt C to convert it to a mesh. And that basically just applies the modifier for all of them. And then we can press Control J to combine them into a single object. And now we can uh, position our camera. So I'm just going to press Alt G and Alt R to clear everything. From side view, I'll press R and negative 90 to rotate it, and then G, Y, and negative 10. Let's go to camera view, and I'm going to press G in the middle mouse button and just zoom in to where I want, right about there. Maybe adjust the resolution of our camera a bit. I think that's a lot better. And for this cube, we want to get it to rotate like this, but the the only way I could find to actually get this rotation to look pretty smooth and cool was pretty weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit mode, make sure everything's selected, press R to rotate 
then x, and 45, and then rotate it on the z-axis by negative 35. If we tab in tab it mode, uh, we'll see that the local axis is still the same. So if we wanted to rotate it along one of these axes, it would just look like it's rotating simply in one direction. But if we undo all those operations in object mode by rotating on the z-axis by 35 degrees, and the x-axis by negative 45, we'll end up moving our local axis, and then we can rotate on this local x-axis and get a much cooler looking animation. But I also wanted to start off looking how it did after the initial rotation. So we'll just tab into edit mode one more time and redo that rotation again. And there we go. We maintained that rotation of the local axis and we have our initial rotation already set. So I'm going to go to the first frame here, press I to insert a keyframe and insert it for a rotation. And then we want to go to one frame after the last frame in our animation. And over here, I want it to only rotate around one time. So we're just going to add 360 to this and insert the keyframe. And now if we press Alt A to play our animation, you can see that it's rotating around. And by the end of the animation, it'll have rotated around completely once. And the reason we put this keyframe one frame extra is so that way there's no stuttering in our animation if we wanted to loop it. Because now, if it just plays like this, it loops perfectly seamlessly. One other thing you'll notice is that it slows down and speeds up towards the end of the animation. So to fix that, we're just going to open up the graph editor over here. And with everything selected, we're going to press V and click Vector so that the speed is linear. And then let's press Shift Z to go to the rendered view. And I want to add an animation for the color of the inside glow as well. So let's go to the node editor. And let's make sure that the glow material is selected. And then here I'm going to add in a RGB node. And let's copy and paste this color to there. And we'll add in a hue saturation node right in between these two. And I want it to start off red. So we're going to set this hue to 0. And this hue will set to about 0.5. And we get our nice red color. But I think I want to increase the saturation maybe a bit. Increase the value all the way to 1. I think a saturation of about 0.85 works pretty well. We'll go back to our first frame. Whoops. Let's go back to our first frame here and insert a keyframe for this hue. And let's go back to this frame and set the hue to 1 and insert a new keyframe. Let's go back to our graph editor again. And we just want to make sure that everything is still vector so that everything is a linear animation and that should be pretty much it for getting that animation so let's go back to this node editor here I think that color may be a little bit too strong let's bring it down to 0.75 I think that looks a lot better okay so last thing I want to add, let's get rid of this window here. I want to add some depth of field to our animation. So let's go to the first frame and add in an empty plane axis. And then from side view, I'm just going to move it to the tip of this cube right here. And with our camera selected, I'm going to go to the camera settings here. And for focus, we're going to select that empty object. We're going to make sure the aperture is set to radius, and we'll increase the size to about 0.1 to get a very strong effect here. And now I'll just render this out real quick. And let's head to the compositor so we can add in that background I was talking about. And let's make it full screen. Let's press Control, Shift, and left click to add in that background node. 
You want to make sure backdrop selected first, though. And what we're going to do is we're going to press Shift A, add in an alpha over node. And let's plug this image into the bottom socket. And for now, this can be any color. We just wanted to get rid of the transparency. So I'm just going to set that to pure black for now. And we're going to add in my vignette node that I created in an earlier tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the description below if you want to learn how to make this. And we're just going to tab in and get rid of this multiply node and just plug the blur output into the group output. Now we can adjust the settings for this to create a nice background for our object. I'm going to change the size to about 0.75 by 0.75 and give it a feather of about 2. And then what we can do with this is add in this mix node and use this as the factor input and just play around with the colors here so that we can get something that we really like. So I want to make that a little brighter maybe. Maybe increase the feather to about 2.5 I think. Looks pretty good. And then let's just duplicate the alpha over node again and plug the original image into the bottom socket like that. Plug this into the composite node and that should be pretty much it for creating the image. Now to render this out as an animation, I'm going to select FFmpeg video. And under encoding, for me, I'm going to use QuickTime because that's what I'm using. And samples, you don't need that much. I'm going to use 100 for this. And then you also want to make sure that since we're using depth of field that denoising is checked and just make sure that your resolution is set to 100 and you can hit animation and that's pretty much it so once this is done rendering I'll come back and show you the end result alright so it's done rendering and here's the final result as you can see we have a seamless animation and we got the nice depth of field effect and we got that smooth animation that looks pretty cool so that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed and learned something new if you have any suggestions for future tutorials feel free to leave them in the comments below as always thanks for watching bye